Hello everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at this new in-box Electropack 175 watt mercury vapor area light. Picked this up yesterday at the thrift store for $10 as you can see. And as you'll see when we start opening it up, it isn't in the best of condition, but I do believe it is all there. So of course, have to pick up a mercury vapor light fixture. Doesn't really matter what condition it's in uh, for that price and being new in box and, you know, the bulbs still be in there and stuff. Uh-huh. Great deal. Gotta get it. So, here's the front of the packaging. I find it interesting that they use the smaller side of the box for the front of the box versus one of the larger sides. But it's very simple again. They just tell you exactly what you need to know. Mercury vapor security light. You can see where you can use it above your garage there. They give you an example picture of the light itself, which I have an issue with, and we'll take a look at that here in a second. And down below, of course, they tell you that it's dusk to dawn. It's got the nice white bluish light that mercury vapor clear it gives off. Of course, that's what it's talking about there. And you'll see it does come with a, a, a bulb, of course. So what is my problem with this picture up here? Let me Let me bring it closer. Do you see anything wrong with it? Yes, this, this bump right here. Do you know what's wrong with that bump? It's supposed to be on the back. It's not supposed to be on the front. This little bump is supposed to be on the back to kind of cover up the area back here where the wires are and stuff. Now I see plenty of these out in the wild where the refractor assembly is on backwards, just like this. And I suppose, I mean, if you're putting it together, you're looking at this picture and you're like, okay, well, that's how they have it on the picture. Must be how I need to do it. Now, <clears throat> one positive thing about having it on backwards is me glancing at it while driving down the road. I can identify the manufacturer of it very fast, but that's supposed to be on the back. That's not supposed to be on the front and we'll install it correctly here today. But I mean, you have a 50-50 chance. I mean, there's two screws holding this refractor on. You can either put it on wrong or put it on the back where it should be. Anyway, that's my little rant as to uh, they need to do some research before they take pictures of their products and put it on the front package. Show them that it's supposed to be, you know, the correct way, not the wrong way. I've seen this with other products too. They'll just kind of put it together and they're like, yeah, that looks right. Whatever. Anyway, well, let's move on. On the other side of the box here, we have just some basic information about how you can save money by not using four 150 watt incandescent floods, which I don't think I've ever seen that many on one box before. I've seen three. I mean, you can get four if you're at like a, one of the old gas stations or something, you know, some really old setup, and maybe that's what they're going for. I don't know. But uh, you don't really see much of that nowadays. Usually it's just, you know, two floodlight heads. Of course, uh, different ways you can mount it and the height and the diameter of the lit area. On the other side here, I mean, this could also be used as the front of the packaging. Definitely took a fall here at some point. Again, the wrong picture. And this side, which doesn't have any picture to it. Obviously, some type of water damage happened to the box here at some point. And we have assembled in Mexico, Electropack. Memphis, Tennessee, very cool. Heavy duty, naturally. I mean, the ballasts in these are amazing, and we'll take a look at that. Just the quality of them is top notch. Wonderful little picture here. And look, it doesn't even have the little bump. They actually put it in the back. Somebody was thinking when they did these graphics. Let's see if we can get a glance underneath. Not much underneath there. Looks like it may have been at someone's garage sale for $10, and uh, Value Village was like, yeah, huh, we can do that. Huh, well, you'll save one penny, because that makes a huge difference. Assembled in Mexico, I guess in the, some, some type of date code, um, 515 of 1996 is my guess there. So let's open it up. It's missing its top cardboard, if it even had one. And right off the bat, you can see what the problem is. Uh, where's the refractor for this? Well, it's here. It's just cracked. Like, it had to have taken a hard fall, this box. It's unfortunate. And you could tell because it's all flat here. But I'm going to do my best to get it back into shape and put it back into the reflector here. Again, there's the little bump that goes in the back. There it is again. Very Electropack, uh, American Electric. You know, because they're all kind of the same thing. You know, they had the little bump there at the back too. 
and you just have the two holes, so I mean, you have a 50-50 chance of getting it on correctly. But yeah, it obviously took a fall in the box here, and unfortunately cracked up the refractor. And like I said, I'm going to try to take a little bit of time and see if I can snap some of this back into place. It's very common uh, for these refractors to get cracked over time, especially with age and heat and everything. So it's not that big of a deal, but it would definitely be nice if uh, we could get it back together. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a try. Why not? Um, the construction of it, it is very thick here at the top, uh, much more so than some of the more modern offerings, and you can kind of see that there. So, of course, thinner at the bottom, much thicker at the top, but you definitely have uh, some more there going on than the... Like, I recently did a video on the Heath Zenith uh, high-pressure sodium one, and that was much thinner. Okay, so we have the bulb. Phillips, as you can see. We'll set that aside for right now. Here's our instructions. We have a nice mounting here that is very handy. Again, a picture of the fixture itself. Note there's no bump on either side there. So there's some of the instructions. And uh, more here on the back of how to put it together. Your limited warranty. Very nice. Set that aside. Okay, we have a cardboard divider here for the head itself. We'll just take that out and set it aside. That is heavy. That is quality. Okay, here's our little goodie bag with the cover and some mounting bolts and everything that we should need. It should still be in there. Our photo cell. Take a look at that here with the bulb in a second. Let's take out this bottom piece and see if there's anything. Oh, there's a bolt for mounting it on the wall. Uh, but that appears to be it. It looks like there's a little nut over here. It probably fell out too. I don't see anything else. So I'm gonna set the box aside and reposition the camera. Okay, so let's take a look at the photo cell here. Pacific Scientific, Fisher Pierce Division. And the first time when I, I went, because I was, of course I went through this at the store to make sure it's everything's in here, I thought it would open at the top, but no, this one actually opens on the side. Installation. Yeah, it's different. It opens on the side. There's our photo cell. Very nice. And there's a little piece of plastic in there from the refractor. Wonderful. 95. August 31st of 1995. Very cool. Wonderful. Okay, okay. Now the bulb. Phillips Mercury Vapor, March of 1995. Ooh. Okay, made in USA. It's a clearer one. Ah, oh, look at that. It looks like it still has the lifeguard electrodes in there. Look at how big they are. Mm -hmm. That's an indicator. That's a very nice quality right there. Okay, there's the etch. Phillips 175 watt, USA. What a beautiful ball. This is gonna be awesome to turn on. I can't wait. How cool is that? Okay. And course we have the head itself so on the top is our photo cell there we go there's the american electric name same photo cell socket they used on their street lights and everything again this thing's very heavy look at the size of that ballast oh that is so good just look at that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we'll take it out and get a closer look because it's just so awesome here we have electro pack again What's that? 3.3 amps. Of course, 175 watt mercury vapor. UL sticker. Oh, and there's that date code again, I assume. Five, what was that? 15 of, I'm guessing 96. It's kind of rubbed there. Oh, but look at how beautiful this is. Mm-hmm. That mogul socket. Oh, this is so yummy. 
I don't know how to how else to describe it. This is just so cool. Okay, so naturally we got to wire this thing up and demonstrate it for you. But before we do that, let's go ahead and take a look at that ballast. I can't even begin to explain like how good of quality these older mercury vapor consumer grade bucket lights are or area lights, whatever you'd like to call them. They're all really the same thing. They're just not anema head. They don't have the latches on the side. Um, but let's go ahead and get this ballast out so we can see the amazing quality of this fixture. I have another one of these Electropack lights. I picked it up from the REPC place of all places uh, quite a while back. It had a Lights of America 65 watt, 240 volt fluorescent bulb in it. And it had that soda can thing on the top because someone took out the uh, photo cell and just wired it directly. So it's probably used inside most of its life, like in a garage or something. And uh, that thing is same, same setup, same wonderful ballast inside. Okay, we got the screws out. Same screws they use in their street lights. Oh, look at that thing. Look at how, mm-hmm. Look at the size of that ballast. That's what I'm talking about. Like, just the coils. Just, just look at that. I'm going to grab another one here. This one is a McGraw Edison. And again, just see how big and beefy these ballasts were, you know, back in the day. Like, this one's even slightly bigger, I'd say. But just the, the quality and the size there, like the... The newer ones that came in the Regent fixtures before they were discontinued were much smaller than this, like maybe this wide, like they were tiny. Just, just look at that. It's awesome. I can't emphasize it enough. If you find these fixtures, pick them up. They're beautiful. Yes, just, you just have to look at that and you're like, that's quality. I know I keep saying it over and over and over, but what a find. There's no... Uh, indicator on the ballast itself like a sticker or anything they just didn't do that for these so whatever is on the the tag here obviously is what the ballast will be because it is uh, spot welded to the frame here but this thing oh this is going to be awesome to turn on so of course inside we have the photocell socket it is so clean in there look at these wonderful fiberglass uh, woven wires they're still coated. Mm. This is awesome. Okay, so we're gonna get this put back together here. And then we'll move on to wiring it up. But before we wire it up, you know, I'm just gonna leave these screws out for right now because I'm probably gonna put a ground wire on this, you know, just to be just to be safe about it. So we don't need that put back in just yet. But let's move our attention over to the refractor assembly here because it definitely needs some help um first of all this is not the right shape this needs to be bent back into somewhat of a circle there we go and this isn't really much of a circle anymore either to be honest so i'm not sure how we're going to really get this to fit in here but i'm thinking once we kind of get it snapped into place it might hold itself which would be good. Now let's, I'm gonna to try to put all these cracks in the back here, just so they're a little more hidden. And to be honest, I have no idea what I'm doing. We're just gonna try some stuff here and hope that we can kind of reassemble this without breaking it more. Because if we break it more, I mean, I guess you get a wonderful video. But uh, then, I'm, then I'm sad because uh, we weren't able to save it. Let's see here. Well, I guess give me a minute. Let's see what we can do. So I got the refractor put together the best I can here. And it's just taped to hold itself at the moment. It really doesn't want to stay like that, which is unfortunate. I think part of the problem is, is that they kind of over crimped it right here. So it's just not as big as it should be to hold all this. Anyway, what my next plan is, is to... Uh, some of this stuff use some epoxy here 
and uh, mix up just a small batch of it. I have something else that needs it too, so I'm going to do that at the same time. But I'm going to tape this up the best I can to hold it all together and just put a couple little areas of that on because it doesn't need to be perfect and uh, it does yellow with the light, but that'll at least hold it together. We will do that. Okay, so I got a couple dabs on there, um, as you can see. One in the back, one in the middle, and one up here, kind of at the intersections where they all meet, because obviously these are all fine, in my experience. You don't need to do the whole thing, just do the intersections. And uh, one thing I did have to do before I did this is I expanded the rim here a little bit more because I noticed that that was part of the problem as to why it wasn't all sitting together nicely because usually if you do it right it'll kind of just clip back together because it just is going to sit like it used to be and it just wasn't doing that so I expanded the rim here a little bit and that solved our problem so while that's setting I'm going to set that over here and uh, let that set uh, let's take some time to wire up the head here so obviously we have our little accessory kit wherever that went and I do have the ceiling fan on in the background because uh, just the fumes of the epoxy naturally so we'll open up our little our little, our little baggie here and we had that extra nut and bolt here they are so we've got our two nuts it looks like we're oh no okay there's our two screws that must be to hold on this cover uh wow this is much sturdier than the one that we looked at with the high pressure sodium one much better okay got some screws i'm sure these screws are for the ballast and no no these are for the ballast what are these for Hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to assume, I don't know what you'd need ones this long for to put this in, and that doesn't really fit. That, that, that fits, I get, well, no. I, I don't know. I don't feel you need a screw this long, though. You know, we'll figure that out when we get there. But we have our mounting bolts here. We don't need those, really. So, this sits on the back here, just like this. And you can either have the wire come out the back or on the bottom. And I usually just have it come out the bottom. So we need to get this little knockout out. And all you have to do is just kind of push on it and rock it back and forth. It'll come off. There we go. And naturally going to want to put some type of a strain relief on there so let's get one of these now this is not outdoor waterproof by any means but I like using these and I have an abundance of them so that's what we're going to use we'll put that on there I usually put it off center a little bit like that and then you can just tighten it up with your grip. That's a little slanted, but whatever. Okay, so we need a cord. Let me find one. And we're gonna use another LG washer cord here. So let me get that all cleaned up. As, I, as I've mentioned in other videos, uh, these cords are great. They already have a nice grounding loop here, which we'll put on one of those screws. Now they have this little ferrite core that we'll have to get rid of. And also this restraint here. Now the restraint on these LG power cords uh, isn't necessarily molded onto the wire itself. And you can actually just get rid of it. So what I do is slowly eat around the outside of it here. And eventually you'll get it down all the way to the cord. And once you get all that off, it'll just be a regular cord. So right there is where the restraint was. And now it's gone. So, not bad. Got to get rid of the little ferrite core here. Unfortunately, it won't fit through our, our connector, so we'll get rid of that.
just so that there's not a big mess. And look at that, we have a very nice ground wire there. Now, of course, we don't need the plug that plugs into the power filter. Get rid of that. And uh, now we'll just clean up the rest. And now we have a nice recycled power cord. So let's go ahead and feed that through our connector here. And we need to just make this a little more open so it's easier to get our wires through. There we go. And, and I don't necessarily put it through all the way. You just need enough. So I'm going to... We'll tighten that down now and you don't need this to be overly tight you just want it snug you know so your your wire doesn't come out nice okay now normally the ground would go right here but i'm just going to put it on one of these posts inside it just will make it look a little cleaner and of course we need to strip these wires here so let's go ahead and do that Twist the stranded wire together. Do the same thing for this one. Twist that together. It's a bit much, but yeah, I'll be fine. Okay. Let's see here. Now, we have our neutral and our positive or hot. And we need some wire nuts. Now, it didn't come with any wire nuts, interestingly enough, but hey, I got plenty, so that's not a big deal. Get some wire nuts here. You know, it's one of those things you buy like a whole thing of wire nuts like this, and when you're doing so many projects like this, you wonder, where do they all go? And then you end up buying more. Crazy. Okay, so our wire's fed through, so we're good there, so we don't have to undo anything that we're about to do. And we have our positive here. I'm going to put the two black wires together, twist them together like that. Put our wire nut on. And twist until you see the wire starting to twist. Give a little tug. Good. Okay, do the same thing with the, the white one here, the neutral. Okay, the wire nut on, and give it a little tug. Okay, so these wires are coated in a special coating, and they got like the fiberglass wrap on them for the heat, to the heat from the ballast. So we're going to try to just keep all of our wires up in the, the neck here since they're not necessarily meant to be in such a hot area. And I'm gonna reposition this bracket here and we need to put the screws back in for the ballast. So let's go ahead and do that. This one we'll put in over here, okay? And then this one over here, I'd actually like to put the, the grounding on. Where did I just put that screw? Here it is. Oh my gosh, there's a fly around here and it just keeps bothering me. And uh, so we have our ground. Nice part about this is that it'll kind of hold it for us. Okay, that's good. That's good. Okay, whatever. We're good there. So we'll have our wires come into this front area here. And we'll try our best to just keep them up here just to keep them away from the heat and all that normally I'd kind of keep them inside the head it doesn't really matter that much but it is a big ballast it is gonna make some heat so I'm just getting all those wires down in there and uh, this will just cover it right up there we go and it looks like they're all nestled in there nicely enough so this is where it comes in. I'm going to think that these are for the refractor. Yeah, because they do not fit. So that means that these super long ones <laughs> must be for this purpose. And, well, 
I got these washers. Again, I don't know. Let me take a look at the instructions. Mounting screws for optical assembly, wiring, compartment, cover. Yeah, it isn't very specific on what ones you got to put where. I think, I don't know. We'll just put this on. In the past, I've seen the washers go on the inside to hold the refractor assembly. So we'll just put them in there. The world's longest screws for no reason. Always important to have that. So let's turn on side here. Of course, more flathead. So we'll tighten that up. Would have been nice if they, uh, you know, included like a lock washer or something. There we go. That don't look too bad. Hopefully it's rust resistant, you know, stainless steel or something. Yep, and all of our wires are nicely in there. Looking good. So, now we just need to put our reflector or refractor assembly on. I think it might still be drying not entirely sure uh, but it's definitely been over five minutes so let me take the tape off and to see how we're doing so i didn't even take the tape off it is slightly tacky still um, it did say it's going to take five hours i'm sorry not five hours five minutes to get tacky you know to hold itself or set and then one hour to fully set so We'll let it be. We'll let the tape be on there. It's going to be in the back here anyway. Here we go. This bump goes on the back. See? It's supposed to cover up that area. Kind of go like that. That's what it's for. That's how it goes. Okay. So, I'm going to assume that the leftover black screws here are for the assembly see down in there so we'll just put these in they feel like they start but they also feel like they cross thread at the same time oh my gosh you know what I just noticed this wire is pinched right here we don't want that so let's take that out Let's lift this up and uh, it's not pinched too bad, it's just kind of sitting there it looks like, but I still don't want that there. I don't want anything to be pinched in any way, shape or form. So now it's just sitting there, but at least it's not pinched anymore. And again, put that on the back and we'll screw it on. There we go, it's all put together. With a little help from the drill, I got those screws in there. They needed a little starting, and once they got going, uh, they screwed in just fine. Maybe it just had to self-tap. I'm not entirely sure. But now, we just need to put the bulb in it, of course. Very important. Our nice Phillips lifeguard electrode bulb here. too tight doesn't that look awesome it does okay and last but not least the photo cell twist lock now we got to hang it up and turn it on of course there we go all set up for demonstration can't wait to turn on that bulb so the one that i already have here it's made in July of 96. And of course this one was made in May of 96. Got an appropriate angle on it here. I mean, this is how you'd be looking at it from the ground. So let's turn off the lights and we'll turn it on for the first time here in three, two, one. Beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful. I want to 
it's so quiet. Look at that color. What a beautiful blue mercury vapor color. So quiet. Obviously, let's let it warm up. Well, I'd say we're definitely at full brightness now. What a beautiful blue, white, mercury vapor color. Of course, on camera, it's got a nice tint of green there, kind of mint color. Mmm, beautiful. So, let's see how well it's lighting everything up. Ah, uh, yes, that mercury vapor green color. Lights everything up real well. Oh, I just love the light that this thing gives off. Come back up here. Very nice. Okay, we're gonna turn it off here in three, two, one. Get a little cool down action there. That was pretty quick. For whatever reason, I forgot to end the video appropriately. So here is the fixture in its new home next to three other area lights, mercury vapor, high pressure sodium, and LED. Anyway, I really do hope you enjoyed this video going in depth into the Electropack 175 watt mercury vapor area light, taking a look at the ballast, wiring it up, fixing the refractor, and enjoying its beautiful mercury vapor color. Once again, I do hope you enjoyed this video, and also please comment, rate, share, and subscribe, and thank you very much for watching.